Well, welcome back into the news portion of DSI. We start tonight in Wicomico County, where roughly four months ago, Parks and Rec officials were unsure if games would even be played on county fields this past summer, which would have been a huge economic hit. But thankfully, they were able to find a way to pull this off safely. And 47 ABC's Taylor Lumpkin tells us how it was done. It was, it was interesting. It was sort of the same, but definitely different at the same time. For James Simmons and other members of Wicomico County's Parks and Rec team, finding a way to host sports tournaments in the middle of a pandemic wasn't easy. There were definitely some expenses that we, we hadn't had in the past, but overall we've been able to make it, make it work so far. And after missing out on half of their spring season, they started to really feel the pressure. To take a, an entire spring that we can't have activity going out there, that's... that's um, a big part of our budget for, for the recreation department in the county. So when they finally got the green light to hold tournaments in June, they didn't hesitate to start the season back up, with some precautions, of course. We, we had to do quite a bit, um, adding staff, adding supplies for disinfecting, um, as well as also, you know, signage all over the park. It didn't take long for parks and rec officials to make up a lot of the money they lost during those first few months. Once we got to June and started having events again, um, it, it, the revenue didn't look very different at all. And their hard work didn't go unnoticed. The entire department have done a great job in, in making sure that they're um, still keeping programming going uh, in a time when uh, their whole business model is based on people. And as the season comes to a close in just a couple of weeks, we're told the department was just happy to give people something to look forward to. If an activity can take place that, that can be done safely and give, give us some sense of normalcy, especially for the kids, um, that was important. Taylor Lumpkin, 47 ABC. Now, officials say they've got a couple of more tournaments that will be held over the next couple of weeks, including this weekend. If you'd like to see a schedule of all the upcoming games, you can head to their website at wicomicorexandpark.org. Meanwhile, Wicomico County Public Schools will continue with their plan to move forward with some in-person classes. That despite the seven-day positivity rate being over 5% as of this Wednesday. Wicomico Public Schools says that right now, there are no plans to move back to an all virtual learning model and add that they will do whatever is necessary to keep staff and students safe and healthy, even if that means moving to all virtual learning at some point in the future. Earlier this week, Dorchester County Public Schools shut down their schools indefinitely and went back to virtual learning, citing the rising number of COVID cases in their area. Now let's toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Daniel Johnson with his full forecast. Daniel. Hey, Brandon, thank you very much. Here is a live look outside in Rehoboth Beach. Looks like they're all decorated early for the holidays. At least it looks like it gets me in the festive spirit here, uh, seeing the lights and traffic running smoothly, of course. But a good amount of people we saw earlier on our Rehoboth Beach sky cam this evening. So the crowds are heading to the coast, it looks like, and it's a bit foggy in some areas tonight. 59 right now for our weather watcher, Ted and Millsboro, 61 for Chucky and Lewis, and 65 for John in Fenwick. But I wanted to show you the nation as a whole because, wow, look at that cold air invading the northern tier of the U.S. Winter is here, 18 in Great Falls, Montana. They're expecting a foot of snow over the next 24 hours. 20 right now in Sioux Falls, Kansas City, 38. Even Texas getting in on the chill, 35 in Amarillo. Dallas is chilly at 52. But on the East Coast, we're enjoying the warmth, I guess. Uh, but the cold air is going to start to inch its way to the east. We're going to feel some of the cool air by Sunday, but not nearly as cold as the west and the northern portions of the U.S. Right now, the winds are calm and light out there, and that's going to help with the fog tonight. It's going to help uh, sustain that fog. Visibility down to uh, a quarter mile right now in Melfa. Visibility in Salisbury has improved since the last hour, but we're still expecting fog uh, to be quite thick after midnight. But look at Epsilon, a very large storm here. Look at that. And there's the island of Bermuda. It just missed Bermuda to the east, but it did hit the island with some strong winds. Now we're watching a cold front to our west, and that's the cold front that's going to bring us a cool down. Come Sunday, it's also going to bring us a few showers as we head through late tomorrow. But more rain is likely on Sunday. It's not raining in Montana. It is snowing. Again, 8 to 12 inches of snow expected in this part of the country. 
It's uh, snowing in Spokane as well in parts of Idaho. I'm a little jealous. I'm a snow lover. I know it's still early in the season, uh, but yeah, big storm for them. 55 to 60 tonight here on Delmarva. We're looking at areas of fog and again, it could be dense after midnight morning fog on Saturday, but then partly sunny for the afternoon. Warm to mid to upper 70s. If you're taking your dog out tomorrow again, it's looking great. This dog walking forecast brought to you by Tucker and Ann Quincy on the beach here having some fun. Thank you. Maureen for sending in that picture again. The dog walking forecast looking good tomorrow. A little bit of fog early, but then partly sunny skies in the afternoon, upper 70s. There is a small craft advisory tomorrow for the Atlantic. The waves will be quite rough. Now we are looking at that fog tonight, but it does begin to dissipate. Look at that sunshine uh, tomorrow afternoon. A few showers possible tomorrow evening. Nothing to cancel your plans over, but Sunday is looking gloomy. It's an indoor type of day because we're expecting off and on showers. Cool too, a high of 60 Sunday, but we warm up Monday, Tuesday and dry out, but the rain comes back late next week. Brandon. Thanks, Daniel. We're taking a commercial break, but when we come back, we're rolling out our top plays of the week, sponsored by Delaware Appliance. Don't go anywhere. This is the Delmarva Sports Insider. Hi, my name is Fred Johnson, head coach at Lake Forest High School, and you're watching Delmarva Sports Insider.